Happy Friday. Welcome to the Sci-Fi Center Live, our Star Trek Weekly Edition. Uh, this week, we'll be, we will be covering, amongst other things, the latest episode of Star Trek Picard, which um, I found it very gripping. I didn't want it to end. That's how, that's how good I thought this episode was. Uh, in a few weeks, once we get towards the end of the season, I've been chatting back and forth with one of the writers on the show. And um, as soon as it's not possible for him to accidentally give up spoilers, I'm going to get him on the show. But um, every time I finish the episode, I text him. And I'm like, wow, this is um, this is really great. And he says it's getting better. So uh, let me go ahead and get right to it and bring in um, uh, someone who's out of uh, dress code just with that hat on its own. But hey, how you doing, Brian? I thought I'd double it up with the football jersey, too. Uh, I am doing fantastic. Uh, yeah, I kind of agree with you 100% on that quick synopsis of this week's episode. Uh, very gripping. Wanted it to be longer. Oh, my gosh. I don't even know where to start, but I uh, can't wait to talk about it for you. Though. Yeah, it was intense. I mean, the intensity between uh, Captain Picard, or, uh, Admiral Picard and Captain, uh, Captain Riker was different to see simply because he was in command and he was like, you know, they didn't know who's, who's advice to lean on pretty much, but they were both end up being wrong. Um, and then uh, when I watched um, the uh, ready room, I saw the cup, the snippet from the next episode where they're just floating in the middle and just falling deeper into this nebula. And all of a sudden these bright lights come out. So I'm wondering what the hell that is. Um, every, you know, this, this, this episode brought, like I said, they continue to bring back nostalgia in a way that does not kill the show. Um, we find out a little bit more. I mean, just throughout the previews and stuff, we know who the enemies are. I mean, we know Laura is in there somewhere. We know uh, who Vatic is. We knew who she was before. We don't know why she is, but we but know. I, I think we got a deeper. I think we got a deeper uh, reveal in this week's episode. Um, that's that, the one I didn't know about. <laughs> yes, that's the one that's like, oh wow! Had I known. I'm excited, but now I, I have a direction for my excitement. And I think I'm starting to speculate a little bit and I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm hoping we'll get to talk about that a little bit tonight too. So, Yeah. Uh, um, the surprise enemy that was not in any of the previews and that was not revealed at all until, uh, until this uh, episode coming up was the return of the, the changelings. Founders. We have not been seen since deep space nine. If I'm the correct. founders. Oh, the founders. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the way they introduced them, they you have the story right now that's taking place in two different settings. Uh, one of those settings is the USS Titan A, where Picard and you know that crew and Riker are, are, are basically spitting to their death, uh, and the ship's just falling apart. But, you know, it's not really falling apart. We find out because it's being sabotaged the whole time. It's being sabotaged. On the other end, you got Raffi, and you have uh, the newly reintroduced War. Um, trying to figure out because these stories are connected. Trying to figure out who stole this stuff, what they're doing, what the distraction is, and they run into a changing mm -hmm. as well. And at the same time, these things are revealed. So you got a changing that they end up killing. Spoiler alert, guys! Uh, I probably should have put spoiler in the thing, but you know, hey, whatever. Um, but there's another changing on the ship that ends up um, continuing to sabotage uh, them. And I thought it was cool when the interaction between Captain uh, Shaw and Jack Crusher, he's like, how do they keep finding us? And he's, you know, he, he's figuring out that they're being, we already knew that they were being traced somewhere. I thought when I saw the blood, I thought they were going to say that it was something in his blood, Jack's blood that they had implanted with one of those uh, raiders or whatever. But no, it's, it's, uh, they are, they're intentionally screwing up um, uh, the trail of the ship and, you got to see a changeling and I, you know, but since we saw lore, we already know lore is involved and he's a machine. And from what that changeling, the changeling on um, Rafi's uh, end of the universe said is, you know, it's, it's already over for you guys, the solids. So I'm thinking my theory is that they have linked up that lore is running these changelings. He's like a, it's like yeah. a cult. Kind of like, kind of like that, uh, the next generation episode where he takes over the board collective. Yeah. Yeah. He just basically did this. Cause they, they even made, they even gave you enough details to tell you that, um, that they've made peace with the founders 
but the reason why and they'd known about this terrorist sect, but the only reason why they didn't do it is is and it made sense because it's the same reason why you know that they saw each other doing the Raman and Earth War, but it would have destroyed the the Earth uh Vulcan alliance if they would have seen what the Romulans looked like earlier on. They wouldn't oh, have absolutely. been a federation. So well, I, shout I out see to our it. boy uh uh Odo too. Like Yeah. Yeah, he got a mention. Honor, he got a mention. So. Yeah. He got a mention by War. I have an old friend of mine uh, once told me about these guys, and so he told him about the Lincoln. Oh, they're still alive in in canon, even though uh, oh, absolutely, uh, no longer with us. So he he lives on forever in the Great Link. No, you never really need to leave. You You brought it up. You brought it up last week, and uh, I did watch the Ready Room uh, episode for this week too, and they touched on it as well. But you brought up Michael Dorn. Okay, so the 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 kind of opening reveal we get of this episode he's listening to the same opera that picard's listening to in first contact and i'm like oh hello uh i love that song uh that berlioz or whatever uh and she comes up on him and and basically gets, gets disarmed and within seconds but from that moment on you get that wharf i was expecting it too wharf son of mo but then he, yeah. he starts dropping names and it's like the, the one of my favorites was the son of, son of uh you know uh Roshenko or whatever he, yeah, he brought he's, in he's, that part of the yeah, family cool. the house of martog the bane of the freaking house of doros i was like yes dude slayer of slayer of, uh, much. Slayer of gowan did he, did he kill yep. gowan yeah slayer of gowan, yeah, killed gowan. Oh. House of so, I mean, yeah, he would he, the whole list. And would you like some chamomile tea? <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, I thought that, that was hilarious. I am wharf delivery. I was like, bro, get there. Well, it's like remember in uh, first contact where Alfie Woodard's character when he's coming up the ladder and she looks at him for I the very first time. He's I am a Klingon. He just says, I know you <laughs> I know what your questions are. That's here. Here's my answer. I'm a Klingon. But his sense of humor throughout the whole thing was funny. When she says, well, what are you going to do? Just come in uh, beheadings on Tuesdays? He's like, beheadings are on Wednesdays. But um, so he's he's basically working with Starfleet as a subcontractor. So he's like the CIA. He's like, you know, he don't. He's doing things that they can't be involved in, but they need to be involved in. So, work, you know, yeah, I, I, I really I really enjoyed that. I, that. That side of the story was dragging for me. And it really, as you see the sides coming together, uh, we still and haven't that, seen Jordy yet. So well, and then the the chemistry between Michelle Hurd's Rafi and Worf, it's freaking amazing. Like just watching those two play off of each other. Like I'm enjoying watching Rafi on screen now because it's like, wow, all right, cool. Yeah. She's connecting with one of those legacy characters, and and, and this is really interesting and, and intriguing. So like because before very, she was annoying the hell out of me, and kind of yeah, but, and it was just like, yeah. where are you doing? Like you're, you're kind of like the junkie on the show or whatever. Like is that your thing? No, yeah, like, the struggling. I thought I was watching Lethal Weapon. I thought I was watching um, uh, Riggs and uh, Martin Lethal Riggs. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, and then again, Warp is uh, Martin. But, uh, but no, I, I, the, the, the most compelling thing about it was just the, the intensity between everybody on the Titan. I yeah. mean, when he gets, when you see, they showed a lot more blood in this episode than I'm used to seeing. When you see Shaw, oh, Captain like went that, down, bro. Like he was yeah. spitting up blood. His teeth were all yeah. messed up. Like. And then he's like, oh, "You gotta send it with you take it out of it." Um, so he just hands the ship over to. A, when I saw the scene, the previous scene of that, I'm like, "Dude, he just you just gave up your ship." Then I realized, okay, this guy's about to die. Uh, so and when when he's in there and that that doctor is uh, you know trying to like, I don't, things have changed in 20 years. I can't. I don't have time to play you. And you knew right then the cliche was going to come around where they were going to need her old school techniques uh, because they, you know she's still performing medicine. She's still, you know, a doctor. She, you know, she's oh, not a doctor for Starfleet. So, and so is he. That's what people don't realize is Jack Crush is a doctor too. He's he's probably taught. He's probably got more medical expertise than everybody everybody else in there. But um, I like the way they started changing things around to where everybody has a reason they hate him because he's got them in danger, at least allegedly. Okay, I got a question here. The Titan wasn't by accident then. If there's a changeling already on that ship, then then they either got aboard doing well. Actually, no, because they didn't transfer any cargo from uh, the Ilios the Ilios or whatever that ship was. They didn't transfer anything but people to yeah to it was um, just risk space stock to out there. Uh, ah, yeah. yeah, dude, it's kind of like okay. So here's the deal: 
Uh, remember the Deep Space Nine episode, The Search? Yes, parts one and two. Oh, no, no, not The Search. Oh, it's the one where they get stuck in the planet, uh, like a gas planet. And they're trying to find the changeling on board their ship. Oh, and they end up killing him and he says we're everywhere. That one? Yes. That episode, yeah. Yes. It, it wasn't The Search. It was. Oh, like, oh yeah. So which I one get was what you're it? Like, I know oh, what you're I'm talking about because if you look up the appearances of the changeling. It was the one where Odo actually broke the rule and killed the changeling. He killed him because he it was on the warp coil. He got him on the. Yes. He, uh, he pushed him into the warp coil and he, he reaches forward to him and he whispers in his ear. And then they're like, what did he say? And he says, it's too late. You're too late. No, you're too late. We're everywhere. So even if the Titan wasn't a random ship, they had. I guess they had changes on every ship then. Well, they, they're 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 coordinated. It's like it's kind of like the the episode where they go to back to the Earth and uh, you know O'Brien's the changeling or whatever, and it's like hey, we're everywhere, Captain. Uh, you know, you think there would be a way to detect him now since the majority of the the founders are on you know they are at peace with Star Starfleet, but I guess there's not. Even uh, when they weren't at peace, they still had people out there. And even That's even true. if even if they had people out there, if you know the changeling lore, there'd be a lot of changelings that would not know that. Oh, there like Odo. Well, Odo them. was separated from the link. Odo was not part Odo, of the link. Odo was separated from the link and didn't know. Yeah. So, like all those ones out there that they sent out there for exploratory purposes, I'm telling you, like there's just so much more that. Oh man. <sighs> But so, so this is a religious. This is an extreme sect that doesn't that doesn't accept peace with uh, solids. Is what this is, and so in yeah. my opinion, they've linked up with uh, Lore, who obviously is not solid, um, and he's probably corrupted them in some way. And I think what's it, I and I'm, I I, I don't want to guess what I think what's going to end up happening is there's still some data left in Lore, and that's how this is going to end. Um, but I, I'm enjoying I'm enjoying this ride. I mean, the beginning, the how it how it begins is just intense. Like I said, it's just an extended version of Wrath of Khan. I mean, it's just like you're you're still in it. We've been in that nebula. It seems like for a year now. Um, I like the Vulcan, the the bald Vulcan, uh, the science well, officer. Got, I'm, I'm telling you, we're 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 getting the seeds for their next set of live action shows <clears throat> because. I mean, after Discovery is over, I mean, I could see them downscaling a little bit, but with the popularity of this 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 run that I feel like they're going to get, um, and the introduction of all these younger legacy, younger versions of legacy characters, we're we're totally getting that that next next generation. It's it's happening. Let me say hi to the chat real quick because I've ignored them up to this point because I was excited about this. Able to have the work, have a good stream. All right, yes, it was great this week. How you doing, Vince? All right, how you doing, Jerry? More to talk about. Yeah, there's still a lot more, and plus, there's some non Picard issues we got to talk about too, but that are not well, the world. The internet is. We made also them talked the about. We also talked about what you call it. Uh, that they they uh, Beverly and freaking uh, Captain Picard talked about it. I mean, what do you think about Beverly's reasoning for keeping him a secret? Absolutely wrong. Absolutely, one hundred percent wrong. Um, it's the same reason why I, I didn't agree with uh Carol Marcus doing it, but at least Kirk knew about his son. He just he he went along with her wishes to stay away. Picard never had a chance, and he was right when he says, How do you you never gave me the chance to let this kid change my life? You're you're telling me about all these things that you know you know you feared, but you never gave Potential me a chance, wrongs, yeah, yeah, to change all that. Had I had I known I you know and I, I understand what you're saying. How if you knew you have a son, maybe you retire. Maybe you take that admiral's job a lot sooner than you did instead of waiting until you're 184 to take it. Maybe you take a desk job where you're not as in, in, in any line of danger. Maybe you quit Starfleet and just retire to the vineyard with her. He never got that chance to make that decision. And two, now the other reason, her other reason was was um a little bit more solid as far as uh, with the with the name John Luke uh, uh, Ricard, you're you're gonna have a target on your back, but not really because he was retired on a vineyard and nobody went after him. I, I mean, if he's not actively engaged in Starfleet, I don't believe that because there wasn't a lot of people who had revenge on designs on Picard. 
Now, is she's right as an active admiral, as an active captain, as an active member of Starfleet? Of course, yes. But she, he never got the opportunity to say, you know what, kids on the way, I need to change my life. He never got that chance. And I don't think that's yeah. fair to him. So I, in my opinion, she was 100% wrong there. What do you think? Uh, I mean, I can kind of agree with her to a point, uh, but however, she probably should have informed him of of the the child. Uh, you know, at least say, "Hey, bro." I mean, she told she told you know uh, <clears throat> Jack. So it's like, what the hell? Why not tell tell you know Jean Luc? But I don't yeah, know. She would have changed a lot of things. Uh, maybe maybe season two of, of uh, Picard would have been so god awful. Uh, yeah, except and for, I still like, don't like the fact that he's a robot. I, I was hoping that was one of the things that having Q around would have solved, as far as him still being a what, what, whatever the hell he is. I never, I hated that. I really, 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 really hated that. I was hoping Q would come in and say, you know what, you're flesh and blood again. Here you go. Everything that 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 ailed you. That should have been Q's parting gift to me. What is this synthoid madness? You need to be flesh and blood. And that's what he does. And then he's back. I that whole thing is stupid. I did never really they, they, they that was just dumb. Now that's where I started losing it with Picard. It's just a lot of just this. I understand I'm watching science fiction in the 24th, 25th century, but at the same time, even Star Trek has, has been key as far as keeping things relevant and real. And oh. You're a robot now. We're just gonna keep you 94 as a robot. We're not gonna make you younger and happier. We're just gonna, I mean, and then with with Q, that was like the one thing that could. I would have liked to have had them split the robot up and the human and just merge them and say Q and buy buy Picard. That whole that hug you gave him at the end of the season two. There you go. Oh, by the way, damn. There you go. I hated that aspect of it. And then when every, every time they they bring it up, they make me remember that it actually happened. And I really, really, really hate that aspect of Picard. But everything else, though, I mean, as long as they don't remind me of some of the silliness, uh, I would really have liked to see Will Wheaton this week. <laughs> this this uh, last um, – I hope there's a surprise and thing. Oh, so I had a brother. This, and you haven't – because she hadn't talked to him either. I wonder if Will, – well, Will would have to know because he has access to just about everything. So I'm wondering if he knows, but, you know. But I, I enjoyed this episode. I had a lot of fun with this episode. Uh, did, you, I mean, did you check the private chat? I think Stella wants on the panel. Oh, oh yeah, sure. Here we go. There you go. Oops, hold on. Oh, uh, yeah. Then you, yeah, yeah. yeah turn stuff me. up. I can hear you. It's just uh, a black I, screen I now. But this is yeah. appropriate, I guess. Um, yeah, no, because I haven't found an avatar for my laptop yet. But no yeah, Beverly, well, hence the plot twist and a, a different set of writers. So, but yeah, second season of Picard would have been better. Um, yeah. Just a lot of stuff, and I'm happy with the what they're what they're doing. And I think they finally have gotten the show bible fixed for each show. Plus, don't remember. And uh, for those who don't know, um, Star Trek Discovery is going to end at season five. Yeah, I was going to bring that up as our next uh, non. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you yeah. hear us? Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. No, it's just. Yeah. Um, so that's all. Um, Discovery going away. I, 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 ever since the news was dropped, I just keep seeing and hearing some of the dumbest stuff. Oh, they went woke, so they went broke. I'm like, what kind of Cro Magnum are you? Why are you even commenting on no. Star? When you don't you don't know that whatever before there was the idiotic term woke Star Trek was doing it in the sixties so what, what did they they had, didn't go broke then yes so uh, yeah but I I don't well, I, I guess caring for your human, fellow human being is so anti whatever their personality and their traits are this it is offensive to them yeah it's it's anti Star Trek the reason why uh, Star Trek is going going off the air not going going off the air but is is one okay it's a streaming show five years for a streaming show is yeah. equivalent to eight or nine years on network this is not network tv i've been people hearing people for the last 72 yeah. hours say i just wish you could have got seven years it's not a comparison guys it is not a comparison. streamers if you look well, at the way seven streaming seasons shows, isn't seven years 
the five years of I of discovery I think has encapsulated seven years. Practically. Yeah, 2017 is what it came in. So it, if it ends in 2024, 2025, it's actually eight years, which is which is fine yeah. with me. It's simple because here's the thing: if you if you watch the news that's always falling out of Netflix and HBO Max and any of these streamers, you're lucky to get three years on some of these series. If you look at Stranger mm-hmm. Things, which is watched by a bazillion people, it's getting five seasons and that's it. Five yeah. seasons and is how a many win. years has that taken? That I mean, yeah, it, it's not the old standard anymore. Yeah. Well, so there's another thing too: the expense. Making Star yes. Trek: The Next Generation, Voyager, and DS9, in comparison to what it costs to put on this kind of quality, whether you, regards to yes. whether you feel about the content of this the discovery, it's a really expensive, well done show. So is Picard and Strange New World. They spare no expense. So. Mm-hmm. Five years is a win for me. I'm, I'm happy to have had the five years. Yeah, um, the, the, that's what I'm trying to say is that we were lucky to get seven straight years of a normal network television series with Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, and the shortened Enterprise. But five years, I think, is good enough time to, to tell a story. And... and Armchair um, writers, directors, CEOs of entertainment industries out there. You don't know the industry. And yeah, I'm being a little flippant on my own. Yeah, I worked inside the industry. You have no idea how hard these people work. And yeah, you think it's very cavalier of you to, you know, say, oh, I could do better. Well, then do better. Go pitch your, your ideas to a studio. Make sure you copyright the damn thing so no one else steals it on you. But, or action um, are get sued by, do by, better feel by free. Yeah. But um, you know, I've been following Terry uh, Meta- uh, uh, Met- Met- Metalis on Twitter and he's been fielding a lot of questions. So he he has a firm grasp of what's going on. And for those who don't know, he started off as production assistant on Enterprise. So in my opinion, he's living the dream. He started off you know, on the ground floor in, you know, at Star Trek. And now he's moved up to showrunner, executive producer, and director. So, and I think we are lucky that we got a guy that knows what works and what doesn't work. And I'm yeah, I'm just going to enjoy the ride. You know? It's well, like, each- enjoy things, people. Stop criticizing things. Stop and smell the roses, you know? Well, they're comparing, like I said, they're comparing it to to network TV. And when you're doing network TV, the kind of money via ad revenue and guaranteed cable revenue that's funneled towards the studios who are making these is a lot different. And there's another thing about when you're on syndicated TV or when you're on network TV is once you get so many episodes, you get you know you get that volume. You're you're available for syndication on any type of network, so you're you you have that revenue to justify going forward. Whereas streaming, you don't. And uh, mm-hmm. streaming is, is subscription revenue. And these streaming shows, every streaming show that you any, anybody loves, gets expensive every year because those new people that you got, those first year people, aren't first year people anymore. Um, those people who um, are um, are are going to. Um, you know, working on the set, and you know, if they've been with you from day one, those uh, guys get more expensive. It's like you at, at any other job, they get pay raises. And sometimes uh, you get to a point, and with Discovery, I don't have an issue because I think that they've told the story that they mainly needed to tell. I think yes. that um, I, I'm not leaving, I don't think I'm going to leave Discovery with being a wow, I wish I'd have gotten more. I think they've told the story in a way that um, yeah. I'm going to be happy with it. Yeah, plus um, one of their shorts is Discovery and, oh, God, I forgot the name of the computer already, the the AI. Oh, yeah, the one that's you know, 900 but, years. Uh, it's it's, it's yeah. at the end of everything. I remember that one from WoW. Yeah, back. I mean, so you know Discovery's going to, I mean, the ship itself is going to survive. And, you know, the crew will hopefully have gone off to happier retirement someplace. But yeah, that ship we could still have access to, so it's there. Well, and a lot of it's gonna depending on how that how they wrap it up too. I mean, you could wrap this up with them going back in time. I mean, there's I just 
and, and the fact that they're extending oh, yeah. the uh, the layoff because of the fact that they're shooting they're 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 finishing production as if this is going to be the last season. So they've changed some things. So I'm all right with it. Um, I, I I had a good time uh, with uh, Discovery. I I know I'm going to have a good time with the final year. Um, mm -hmm. I think modern day Star Trek owes a lot. Uh, we don't have Picard. We don't have Strange New Worlds without Discovery breaking through. There had not been Trek Very on TV in twelve years. Twelve yes. years without Trek on TV. So when it broke through, and then it in that season two of Discovery, where we got, where we got um, uh, uh, Pike and uh, the, that the Enterprise again, and from that demand, we got Strange New Worlds, which I think is one of the best um, Star Trek productions, of, you know, series wise of all time, and it's only in one season. And we're probably mm -hmm. brace yourself, we're probably going to get what three or four seasons of that. You're probably not going to get seven seasons of that either. So yeah, well, I don't think. I don't think we need seven seasons anymore, considering, like I said, it's streaming and, I mean, you know, slightly different show. I mean, two years for Mandalorian third uh, season three. Yeah. Um, and and Sopranos, remember, Sopranos didn't get 17, seven seasons. It's one of the most popular yeah. series on cable history, and it took 18 months in between seasons five and six. So exactly. this is reality. So, <laughs> Considering the twelve-year drought of Star Trek, I will take any Star Trek that comes. And um, you know the way they have it set up, uh, it sounds um, very encouraging. That at least there'll be something there. And again, um, thanks to even with the rough start of you know Star Trek Discovery season one, which I still cringe when I think of it. Um, yeah. It it's led up to you know all these shows, all these incarnations to figure out how to get back to Star Trek to where it's palatable for the old as well as the new. I mean, you know, I do as much as it's, it's hard to watch those JJ Abrams movies again, if it wasn't for those, we wouldn't have what we have now. Exactly. I mean, I, I am, so, I am, I'm in a very good spot when it comes to Trek and mm -hmm. if, if Paramount is going to cut back, they chose their spot because they have a series that got, is going to get five years. Uh, mm -hmm. And their the card is is ending. Strange New World is only in its first season, so they're probably gonna um, they're probably going to have another show ready for when Strange New World ends. But right now we we have enough track, and we have animated track too that crosses yeah. over. I don't watch the animated stuff as much, even though I watch Prodigy. I haven't seen Prodigy yet because I, I I didn't finish off Voyager, believe it or not. Oh okay. Um, so that's why I, I'm hesitant to to watch that. But you know, I'll, I'll catch up soon. I hope. Yeah, it's um, it's it's a Voyager. Like I said, there's a lot of Voyager nostalgia that goes back to it. So um, um, let's see. Let's go ahead and I uh, get to the chat because I know I I get we got I get caught up. All right, let's see. Uh, that's a wrestling question. I'll answer, I'll answer that question tomorrow, Hunter. Um, when we do our wrestling uh, segment of the show. Uh, points for Captain yeah, Shaw. Yeah, Captain, Captain Shaw. Shaw actually, <laughs> he might have saved the like ship. Yeah, he's like, oh, they're they're finding it. Find out how they're they're tracking us. Yeah, and then I'm glad that Jack Crusher was smart enough to figure that out. Mm -hmm. All right, hello, William, showing love. How you doing, Jay? Uh, hit the subscribe button. Yeah, hit, hit the subscribe button on both a uh, Point Extra Lounge and my channel, which is Sci -Fi there. You go right under my name. Uh, just you know, type in Sci-Fi Center. I'm the first, and I think I'm the only one that comes up. Mm -hmm. All right, 100 meters deep. Uh, yeah. Strange Worlds, uh, Picard. So you like Strange? You know what? A lot of people do. Um, I like this particular season of Picard, but I, I'm pretty sure just based off of what I got out of uh, Strange New Worlds, I'm going to love Strange New Worlds. That last that yeah. last episode of Strange New Worlds was gripping, man, when uh, the Admiral mm -hmm. uh, fight comes through. So, oh, yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Let's see. Here's the... Yeah, uh, just How's let me you? answer this. Yeah, I, I've been, okay. I did a rewatch of Stargate Atlantis. I don't know if I wanted to go through 10 years of SG-1 because the whole bit uh, towards the end was like pissing me off. <laughs> but I still the have to all right, okay. Stargate Universe. That, the way they handled, the Ori should have gotten the yes. more time. The Ori storyline should have started after, after they were done with Apophis. They yeah. should have rolled right into the Ori. 
they shouldn't have done with those uh, Transformer or whatever the hell those stupid things were and yeah. all the other filler stuff. They spent the last two years on the Ori, and some of those were the best stories, and then they rushed the ending of it with the stupid movie. Exactly. Um, but if the Ori would have gotten two more years, if Ori could have, could have gone for a four-year arc, the Ori were impressive en enemies because the guy old got old. The guy old oh, got yeah. old. It, it, they became cliche. But, the, you know, they, we got six years out of them. But the Ori, yeah. I, I thought, were great, and then they just said, oh, we're wrapping it up. But you got. Oh, I was just like loving Lou Gossett Jr. being there all the time. I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> don't see enough. I of love him. his last episode though, his yep. uh, the Fourth Horseman, or yes. um, the, when when he's you know when when they show him all those people dying. For those of yeah. you who didn't watch um who didn't watch Stargate, uh, the Ori had put up the, the Priors had put a plague on Earth and it was killing a lot of people and only a Prior could undo it. Um, Lou Gossett, um, Britak, I think it was his name. Uh, his uh, Lugas yeah. uh, Jr.'s character was uh, was part of Puke's uh, race, but he, mm -hmm. he 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 went over to the origin and decided to to, to become a prior. They made him a prior, mm -hmm. and but when they show him all the people suffering and dying, it reminded them of his enslaved race. You know, all those suffering and dying that he had experienced under the Gaul. So he looks up to him, and this is my favorite scene of, the, of that year. It, you know, because they want him to to stop all this. The the, the general. Um, He's like, if I do this, I'm done. But today I die a free. Um, uh, what was their race? Yeah, uh, free, uh, I can't, uh, free, Utah or Bri Utah or something like that. Uh, I, no, I, well, Bretek was the name of Jaffa, his. Jaffa. Today I died uh, yeah, free Jaffa. Yeah. And he gets his staff and he heals yeah. the entire planet. And then because he betrayed the priors, he burns up. It, it, yeah. was, it was a cool episode. But yeah, um, they, I could have used more of, a, of the Ori, but you know. Oh well, alas. Stargate Atlantis, I loved. Yes, hit like and subscribe. Uh, I need to do a, 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 a membership drive and get my get my subscribers up. I don't do a lot of controversial stuff, so I don't have the the, the, the most subscribers on my channel. Uh, Which but is I, why I'm, we I'm, love you. Yeah, but I, I so I, I'm building it up slowly. But you know, I'm gonna have to do something nice and clean to get me up to a thousand so I can get monetized. Damn it! Mm. Uh, what was that? Uh, oh yeah, Brian jumped to yeah. He had um yeah. he had to be on another stream. He already let me know ahead of time mm -hmm. that he uh, we were going to get him to open it up. I uh, on Netflix. Yeah, I've been watching TV. Atlantis on Hulu. Um, and I and I think most of Stargate is on Prime Video. Yeah, it's on Prime Video. I think some of it's on Netflix. I'm not real sure. I haven't had to watch it in a while because I, I that used to be Sci um, Sci Fi Days uh, lineup mm -hmm. uh, before Sci Sci Fi Channel went Sharknado and fucked up the yep. whole network. All right, the universe only saw the first season of. I didn't see the the second. They one. just really didn't. They that was just a, the wrong show at the wrong time. It only had the one season, yeah. and it was at the time where Sci Fi Channel was changing into, like I said, Sharknado uh, Central. So oh. how you doing, Fourth? Um, uh, oh, William, how's it going? Are you getting? No, I am nowhere fucking <laughs> close to my. I'm like 800 subscribers away. I like I said, there's ways for me to do it, but I'm not gonna do it because uh, I don't want to do those things that you can get uh, to get. I can't yeah, get hundreds of it's you know, slow buyers. and steady progress. That's yeah. what we're going for. Yeah, so I'm like about I'm I'm far far away. I got some uh, things that I'm gonna do, but like I said, I'm relatively a new channel. Even though I've only been on YouTube just over a year with Enosh, and it was only about a few months ago that I even started with my own channel. Mm -hmm. So it's a you know it'll it'll get there, but yeah, it's like uh, I'm going the scenic route. Yeah, right. slow and steady. You need daytime contests or at least shows uh, to build. Yeah, I have um, shorts that were uh, that I'm going to build up. I I am um, I I do have a lot of shorts that I, I am working on. Um, hey, Raya. Because I, I know my um I know my um my movie reviews do really well. Yeah, season nine and ten were great. It just it, seasons nine and ten. The story needed to start in season seven and eight. That's mm -hmm. what needs to happen. So yeah, he agrees with me there. All right, hi, glimmering harpy. How you doing? Um, so yeah, that's um, yeah, we're 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 in a good place with Star Trek. So I, like I said, a lot of a lot of people, I like I said, as long as they just continue to make the um, the comparison, 
you know, to the old the old ways that you know things were done, and it's just different right now. I mean, to get five years on, I listen. Mind Hunters is, I think, the best thing Netflix has put out. Ooh. I can't even get a third season of that. Ooh. I love that show. So I got five years of, and the same thing that happened with um, uh, what was the other what was the other show? Oh, Titans. I mean, mm-hmm. Titans was a show I didn't think I was going to get a second season of. Yeah, that show sure. started on a DC Infinite streaming service that could not afford it, and it got four seasons. And and they get to they get to write their own ending. It's not like you're going to be left hanging. You're going to get an ending to Discovery. You're going to get an ending to these shows. Even Westworld, which I thought Westworld, it was time for Westworld to go. The way they ended Westworld was a suitable ending for the series, not just that season. So, like I said, I think the seven-year thing, I don't think that model is going to be, unless you're law and order or something like that. I think the, uh, the seven-year model, because a lot of these actors, in many cases, don't want to, to be locked down that long. And if they get good, they get more expensive. They move on to bigger things. They start doing movies. And it's just, you know, it's like, I'm not getting, where's my, where's my fourth season of Sherlock? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you think oh, I'm ever going to see Sherlock again with, with Martin Freeman uh, making the kind of cash he makes just for us being a, a cameo? They were close to it and then they stopped. Yeah. And then they, yeah. well, you got Doctor Strange, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. You think they're going to be, uh, uh, BBC is going to be able to shell out the kind of money that they need to yeah, bring Mar- in. Yeah, Marvel grabbed both of them. To, to yeah, it, it, else. It, it sucks, but it 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 is. On the one hand, you're happy for these people, but on the other hand, it's like you know, it's, it's the reality of it is like that's what it is. I am, I am happy. You know, it's not like we're losing uh, Discovery and we have nothing. We literally legit have, in my opinion, could be one of the greatest Star Trek series ever in Strange New Worlds. I love Strange New Worlds, and I love. Yes. Uh, that Captain Pike and the way he has to deal. I I, I initially was like, dude, I don't want another. What's up? Oh, hi, Michelle. How are you doing? Um, uh, ooh, she, she, she needs a little advice. Um, We're coming up on a month since we lost my dad to a heart attack. Um, I have cried my eyes out for weeks uh, to which point. Um, uh, it's yeah. still new. It's still yeah. New. I'm a year and a half out, Michelle, from my dad passing away, and he lived to a hundred. Um, it's a roller coaster. There are going to be times you're going to feel okay, and because it's so fresh, you're going to be hurting. Cry when you want to cry, and if you don't feel like crying, that's okay too. Um, everybody's a little different. Everybody processes it a little differently. It is a, a, a trauma, but. Um, yeah, it's part of your process. As long as, you know, you're feeling okay and you don't want to do any harm to yourself, that's fine. When that starts to ring a bell, I'm just being honest. Ask for help. Um, but yeah, uh, like I said, a year and a half out of my dad passing away. He lived till 100, lived a good life. I knew it was coming, um, but yeah, I bawled like a baby <laughs> for a while, and you know, a bit of your heart, there's a void there, but you know, uh, it gets filled with other things, and it's not that bad. It's okay to finish crying out, uh, Michelle, because you're you're. It's gonna be about a year or so before you're like found something to uh, cope with it. Because I mean, it's like you just have to understand that nothing is forever. Um, people we love, you know, we're all here temporarily. And it's a sad thing, but it's part of life. You have two little ones to take care of, one fresh out of the oven. And like I said, little at a time, don't feel bad. But yeah, there's there's certain times that I feel cried out too, but they're, you know, every now and then I'll do something, hear something or something uh, will remind me of him. And, you know, 
I might not cry, but I definitely get teary eyed and a little melancholy. But um, yeah, it, like I said, everyone processes death a little differently. All right, um, Michelle, yeah. we're here for you. I mean, like I said, we're we yeah. are we are here for you. Uh, so I mean, sorry for that loss and um, mm -hmm. that whole cycle of life thing is just tough. But um, uh, just uh, what we try to do here is try to give you a place to come and escape. Um, somebody brought up a question real quick. Uh, not to cut anybody off. I just want—I don't want to lose too. Yeah. Uh, I was—I was holding on to a chat. Uh, oh, here we go. Sandman season two is confirmed. Oh. It's confirmed. It will be hitting on Netflix. Um, let's see. Do you want to answer this one? Yeah. Okay. There we go. There we go. Um, after seeing Creed three, uh, I can see more of Michael B. Jordan with a few more years of experience and a few more movies as a legit top town. Oh yeah. Definitely, mm -hmm. and um, that Rocky franchise is in good um, good hands. Uh, it's an it's in great hands. So, uh, like I said, uh, sorry, Sylvester Stallone. I know. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I know you. Uh, it's not what you wanted, but um, I don't want to see another a Rocky movie with him in it. Uh, I think the Rocky story has been told. Um, so yeah, it's um, we're we're at that point where if we're going to keep this. Um, if we're going to keep this uh, franchise going, it's got to be uh, it's got to be refreshing. It's got to be new. Uh, another one of I mean, them. Shepard was great. I loved Shepard. I loved uh, the whole thing with oh, Shepard. Yeah. And Jason Momoa. Here's another reason. If you were ever mm -hmm. going to do the continuation of Stargate Atlantis, you got to pay Jason Momoa Aquaman money now because he's a milk magnet. He wasn't a milk <laughs> magnet. Before. He's a milk <laughs> magnet now. So there, here's another here's another case of as things go on. They get more expensive, and sometimes you just have to, you know, get what you can get out of a show. So, hi, uh, Anthony. Uh oh, here's Anthony. Yeah. What, Oops, sorry. I got okay, go. Anthony. What is the one child actor you get? Um, what is the one child actor that you get at oh. the comic book store that is a giant following and sells out your store for signings? I don't do too many signings. Um, I don't do too many signings simple because it's just not uh, cost effective for me. I know a lot of stores out here that do them probably mm -hmm. have deeper pockets, but, um, and when it comes to my low budget, uh, kingdom, um, like, you know, we, we, I, I don't do too many signings. I mean, it, it cause a lot of times you got to bring the person out here, you know, it's, it's the expense doesn't justify it sometimes. And whenever I do get that kind of money together, I'd rather put it back into, you know, Things and back, you know, back into the store as far as permanent structure, things like that. So I don't do. I haven't done a signing in here other than like Lloyd Kaufman and when we do trauma stuff, which we'll be doing real soon. But no, I haven't. Um, I haven't. I haven't done a signing in like almost thirteen years. Actually, fourteen years was the last time I had somebody like you know celebrity wise in the store, and that was like Doug Bradley back when we were doing Hellraiser screenings. So, so no, um, I don't have anybody to give you there. All right, guys, that's uh, the 45 minutes of the week. You got any closing thoughts on um, this week's episode of Picard or um, the timely uh, conclusion to Star uh, Trek Discovery, Marcella? No, just like I said, I'm just enjoying the ride. I'm not going to criticize everything to death because I actually enjoy what I watch every now and then. <laughs> so yeah. forgive me for not having these wonderful theories outside of, you know, when they said, what else did they take from Daystrom? I'm like, more <laughs> well yeah that, that to me that's that's not a mystery i am like i just we know he's here we know he we yeah. know he's in it so i'm thinking like i was telling brian that they're all working for him and there's a cold is working for him and somehow data is still in his memory somewhere and he's going to end up defeating him so but once again i got uh i got or, a writer or, or, or there's like a uh you know like a, a a memory cloud that has data's you know Last. Remember, if you if you remember Nemesis, you remember that that's a very much a possibility. So yeah, well, they were hoping right, for nice. that that, that wacky oh, version, but oh yeah, yes, Michelle, uh, congratulations on your Teddy Ruxpin. Yeah, if you have good condition, you keep your toys in good condition, they're worth a lot of money. Ooh, so. I can't afford you if your Teddy Ruxpin's in any good condition. I I can't afford it, and my my offer would insult you. So sorry. Yeah. So yeah, hold right. on to it. Yeah. Yeah. Or or sell it to a somebody who's you know willing to give you what the value is. Um I would yeah, I, I mean would, if you need the money, go for it. Yeah. If I wouldn't sell it to a retailer because we're gonna we're we're gonna need to make money off of it. Uh I would I would zero in on the collector market 
and uh, find somebody who's actually going to actually want to give you the actual money. You know, it's worth, especially if it's in good condition. All right, for Brian, who had to dip out early to uh, get on to uh, this, his other scheduled stream, and for Stella, um, I'm William okay. with the Sci-Fi Center. This has been the Sci-Fi Center Live, Star Trek Weekly, Picard Episode 3, and that Discovery thing. We will see you guys, oh gosh, like a little bit over 24 hours for our long haul overnight show, 9.30 Pacific Standard Time. We'll all see you then.